You're listening to the Confidence Within podcast. If you are a successful professional entrepreneur who is nonetheless struggling with the fear of public speaking, then you are in the right place. This podcast is all about igniting your inner confidence, learning to show up with genuine authority and brilliance, and becoming the best version of yourself. I'm your host, Victoria Eliasnyansky, and welcome to my show. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Confidence Within podcast. My guest today is Addison Adeg. Edison was a student of mine inside Brilliant Speakers Academy a couple of years ago, and I am very happy to invite him to my show to talk about his experience inside the program and also to share how his life has changed after he was able to conquer his fear of public speaking. Edison is a technical systems and engineering director at Procter & Gamble's largest manufacturing facility in West Virginia. He's a graduate of mechanical engineering and also holds an MBA. He has over 14 years of experience in project management, engineering, and manufacturing. He's been leading the planning and execution of critical engineering projects at manufacturing facilities for Procter & Gamble across Africa, Middle East, Asia, and North America. Please welcome Edison Adek to my show. Edison, thank you so much for coming to my podcast. I am very excited. It's my pleasure, Victoria. Very good to be here to talk about my experience. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, who you are, so my audience knows who you are. I work for a company called Procter & Gamble. I'm, I'm a director currently, so I'm an engineering director at Procter & Gamble. I studied mechanical engineering as my first degree, and I have been doing an engineering assignment or career for Procter & Gamble. I currently have to manage a group of project managers and, and engineers who have to build production plants and facilities for PNG. Very nice. Why did you decide to join Brilliant Speakers Academy? What did you struggle and why finding the solution to your challenges was important to you? I think for me, I realized that I had been doing public speaking for a long time. As a matter of fact, in my childhood days, when I was in my elementary and my high school, I used to be a leader in my class, and I always spoke to my class team. So I always stood in front of people or spoke in front of people. But at, at a certain stage in my life, I realized that I was starting to grow a lot from a career perspective, and I was having to do a lot of public speaking, not just in front of people that I am familiar with, or that somewhat will take instructions from me, but more from people who I have to convince and people who I've never met before. And that started to create some tension because I realized that when I get in some of those rooms, the language was slightly different, even though the content was the same. So the way the message was being presented was different than what I'm used to. So what I was used to would probably be considered as being too raw, too crude, right? Compared to how refined, most of the people in that room would approach some of those conversations. So that started to get into my skin and started to make me uncomfortable to speak in those forums and in those environments. So I thought it was time to go do something on public speaking and see how I can hone my skills and upskill myself in that area. Transparently, before I came to Brilliance Academy, I had a very embarrassing experience where I was told just the day before a very major review with a very, very high place person in the company that I was going to lead a session because the person who was originally intended to do it was going to be on vacation and was not going to be available. And why I thought it was a regular topic, like I said, again, what really got to me when I got into the meeting was when I turned on my Zoom, the, 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 the amount of people I saw on the Zoom, and their levels of responsibility in the company just completely took me off, right? So I completely lost what I was about to say. And I was speechless when it was time for me to talk, and I was right in front of the video, <laughs> which was a very embarrassing experience. So at that point in time, I said, no, I need to do something just beyond reading books. And that was, I listened to TED Talks, which is what drove me to Brilliance Academy. And why did you choose Brilliant Speakers Academy over other things? And what have you tried also? What else have you considered? So I had a very good manager who encouraged me to go take some, watch some videos on TED Talk. I did do that. I watched a couple of people and how they presented their message. But it did appear to me that not all of that was natural. So that was most of the time 
something that people had good time and opportunity to prepare for. So they could basically repeat what they had tried multiple times to learn. My case was very different. My case was that many times I had to walk into rooms unprepared for such meetings, and I had to present the message in a very concise and impactful way and still be able to deliver the content, right? In a very refined way and sound like one of the senior people that I typically would meet in the room. So I was looking for someone who was going to listen to me and talk with me and really understand my point of view and give me the opportunity to do a couple of trials with them. And then I could bounce off a couple of ideas with them. So I wanted a, a medium where I could interact with whoever was my coach. And Brilliance Academy provided that option where Victoria was willing to have sessions with me and talk with me about what exactly makes you feel uncomfortable speaking publicly. And let's do a couple of try or hear a couple of tips. Have you tried this and have you tried that? So I felt that personal connection and that one-on-one -on -one coaching made a big difference. And that's why I came to Brilliance Academy. Some of the things I learned was really about things that happen in the mind. That was very powerful when you spoke about it and how the mind thinks and how you can win in the mind when it comes to public speaking, right? Um, and how you can overcome some of those fears that are on the inside and some of those inside voices. So those were very, very powerful um, things that were in the content and in the curriculum of Brilliance Academy that helped me really deal with that. Because I realized over time, and it's been my experience, and I say to a lot of people today, that everybody has an element of anxiety when it comes to public speaking. Another portion of your academy that was very helpful was how to prepare for your speaking event, right? So that was also very true. So what I've learned over time is when I have important projects or when I have important topics, I always proactively think about if I had an opportunity to meet XYZ in an elevator and he was going to ask me about this, what will I say? So I started proactively preparing a number of those very short but very impactful speeches that I could make if I ever was called into a meeting impromptu like that, and I check them off. And usually what happens is when I get into those forums, it's very, it becomes much easier for me because I felt like I've prepared. Preparing does not only make you speak well as a public speaker. It gives you the confidence you need before you get on the stage. It gives you the confidence you need before you get at the event. Usually what chat constrains you to be an effective public speaker is not the fact that you don't know your content, but it's just the fear that you're not ready to actually share sometimes. So dealing with those things before really makes you to become an effective speaker. And those were some of the things that Brilliance Academy taught from their curriculum. This was very good for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's talk about now, two years later. How is your life and your career different based on what you've learned inside of Brilliant Speakers Academy? How did that change your life? Amazing. It's completely different today. Right. I feel like I can walk into any room and share my experiences because first, just like Brilliance Academy has taught me, I have learned, first of all, to deal with my inner fears and to take care of the anxieties that come into my head and into my mind about what I'm about to say. So I feel confident about what I'm about to say. And if I'm not able to present my content well, I'm more than happy to ask if people have questions so that if they have questions, I can answer their specific questions or just meet their specific needs before I leave versus leaving and feeling like I did not meet their need. So I feel confident to ask them a question and say, did, 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 my, did what I just say clarify what you wanted to know? Was there something more you would like to know so that I can share a little bit more? And I feel confident asking those questions. You know? And that has significantly helped me in, in speaking. Beyond that, I think, you know, like I said, it's been a very good journey. I think I have learned a little bit more to prepare. And one of the things that Brilliance Academy did teach was about the content of what you were going to talk about, knowing the content of what you were going to talk about. So I spent a lot more time on the content of whatever I need to talk because my role is fairly technical. I spend a lot more time understanding the technical details of my work. So that gives me confidence such that if you wake me up anytime and you ask me to give a speech on any part of anything I'm working on, I feel very comfortable talking about it. And just like this podcast, it's like a story. It's like storytelling to me. I just feel very relaxed and I can just tell the story. And I'm sure that when I do that, people can just get the message. So it's been completely life-changing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the last question for you, if someone was on the fence about joining the Brilliant Speakers Academy, what would you say to them? I would say get on board for many reasons. One, I think the content of the class is fantastic because the content is very powerful and great. The fact that you can speak to Victoria on a regular basis is awesome. 
the fact that you could actually be very open and feel like you can actually share anything about yourself and feel like it's a safe place to do that is great. The fact that you're not reading a book and just trying to imagine how the person did it, but you're talking to the person who actually wrote the content and can ask her questions about whether this means this or that means that, or if I do it this way, does it really mean I'm getting it right? It gives you that opportunity to interact and ask questions is great. Plus, when you never try, you never know. So why not just try and see how it works? Thank you so much. I am so proud of you, Edison. I'm always so excited to talk to my clients from <laughs> a year ago, from two years ago, from three years ago, just to see what you're doing and how your life has changed because it makes me feel so grateful to be doing what I'm doing because I see the real result. I see the life change and results in people. And that makes me feel so good about what I do every single day. So thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed Edison's interview and it gives you hope that conquering the fear of public speaking for good is fully within your reach. And if you would like to learn more about my Brilliant Speakers Academy coaching program, then go to www.brilliantspeakersacademy.com. Personally, I would love to feature you as my spotlight client just a few short months from now. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye for now.